there's at least minimum of three drinks that are spilt. Um, two draws dropped visibly. Welcome back. Uh, we return and let's set the scene. Get the I turn to Rockport the night before the ritual. The dense fog glows silver in the moonlight as the rays roll into the bay of the small village. The street corners bristle with incited townsfolk and crows paw incessantly overhead. A woman peers through the curtain of Wright's funeral parlor from the second story window outside of the roving mob. The curtains drift close as she turns back to the vanity, takes a look in the mirror before preparing herself for the show. Melly, would you mind describing Samara for us? Yeah. So, uh, Samara is a relatively petite young woman, um, just past shoulder length, curly hair, um, pretty yet unassuming, um, very observant, um, wearing a, you know, trench coat, dress, light hat, low heels, Light makeup. <coughs> Excuse me. As you uh, finish up reading yourself, you hear a light knock on the bedroom door. And after a moment, the door opens, and a red headed woman in a black and white spiral dress stands at the threat. You look magnificent, my dear. Shall we? Deandra, <laughs> yes, yes, we shall. Yes, and uh, she turns and kind of ushers you through the door, follows you downstairs, and uh, outside, to a pearl white Rolls Royce parked in the drive. As you step outside, the uh, kind of wall gets a little louder in the distance. But the uh, crowds tend to, the mobs tend to avoid giving a wide berth to the entire property of, of the right parlor for unknown reasons. As you step outside and enter and uh, head to the car, uh, patrolling groups of men armed with bats, clubs, and the occasional shotgun eye you as uh, the car pulls out and heads into the center of town. Crows overlook, watch, looking down at you from power lines around him as the car kind of rolls through this chaos. And you approach a intersection where a group of deputized men have blocked off the road with saw horses. They glower at the car for a moment before and, and mutter to each other as you the car rolls to a stop. 
Gandra is calm at the wheel and just waits for a moment. Is there a reason we're stopped? They'll clear the way here in just a moment. I I do indeed in, enjoy quite a bit of anticipation, but quite a lot happening around us. Uh, they know better. After a few moments, the men mobilize and uh, clear the road, moving the sawhorses aside before waving you through. Deandra gives a cordial nod as you cruise past, and the car rolls up outside of the Rockport Lounge. The town center is much calmer. The uh, groups are out, groups of people are out, but they are less rowdy here, and uh, seem to be a some seem to be uh, gathering around the Rockport Lounge as the car pulls through and into the lot. Uh, bouncer steps out as you uh, pull in and moves a cone away from a reserved spot as you pull in. He opens the door for you and ushers you inside as a uh, he uh, leads you into the back room of a theater, backstage area. As you enter, the wall of the crowd inside kind of greets you from the other side of the curtains as you step into the backstage uh, where a band is kind of tuning up, getting ready to presumably back you up. Um, you catch glimpses of the audience through the curtain. Wild-eyed and rosy-cheeked patrons inside the packed, hazy lounge. Deandra leads you to the dressing room and uh, closes the door quietly, uh, softly behind you. Sam, how are you feeling? Yeah. <laughs> Pre-show jitters as usual, you know? You're going to do great. I love you. I know it. Yeah, but you, know, you just can't always help that sinking feeling that something, something's wrong or something's going to go wrong. From what we've seen, I... Can you really blame that feeling? Try Not to keep your mind off of it for the show. I think it's the last one we have to do. Keep our cover. By this time tomorrow, more or less be all over. But D, how how have you done this for so long? I feel like I haven't been in this as long as you, and I'm already exhausted. It tempers you over time. Well, <sighs> in others it breaks. I suppose a few glasses of, I don't know, <laughs> something doesn't hurt. <laughs> and uh, she kind of walks over to the uh, armoire and kind of opens it up. And uh, with the clothes, Kind of uh, in the corner, there's a little tray, silver tray, with a, a uh, decanter of uh, presumably brandy, two glasses. Mm. I know it's not your favorite, but uh, all oh, they have. We'll make do. Pours, Cheers. He pours his glasses and you won't. Blinking your glass. 
to our last show <laughs> for now. <laughs> and uh, she takes, sips the uh, brandy. A little like that. Um, and. Uh, cool. So. Uh, I should be back by the time you finish your set at nine. You're, you're leaving? I know. I have a meeting with our friends. One's with your sister. But Dee, why are you going without me? I could, I could back you up. I, I, I know her. I know. I just remember the last time at the theater. I didn't want you to freeze again. And just I know. I know I fucked up, but like I I'm I'm more resolved now. I, I understand now. Understand. And this isn't a punishment, just timing. The mob's live, it's only a matter of time before Weatherwood catches a wind What's going on here and ends in a team. How will you let me know that if 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 you need me? How how can I focus when when you're there and I'm I'm here? My dear, that is something you're going to have to learn to do. And this is probably the last rehearsal. We all feel insecure on our first time out on our own. Trust in your abilities, your gut. Fine. Be back at night. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. The bouncers here, they aren't gonna let things get out of hand. The crowd, a little rowdy, but... Music is the moonlight in the gloomy night of... And we are the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. She uh, finishes, <sighs> puts the glass back, and uh, heads to the door, turning back one last time. Um, <laughs> turns back once more and uh, looks to you. Be, you be careful out there. I know that's my sister, but... I just feel like something's different. Something is different. Just please, please, please be careful. I will. I promise. You break a leg. Yeah. <sighs> two. I'll break two. <laughs> and uh, with a sm one last smile, she turns, opens the uh, door quietly, and softly closes it behind her leaving you alone in the uh, dressing room a few minutes before the show starts out. We got this. We got this. <sighs> so Mara will walk over to the nearest mirror, kind of look at herself, pat her cheeks, get into the zone, do this. I can do this. Last one. Last one for the road. As you step to the door, take one last breath. You open the door. Yeah. Crowd roars from beyond the curtains. You uh, step up, and the band settles in their positions, <clears throat> and uh, 
the stagehand kind of waits for your cue. He signals, and the music dies down. The crowd doesn't die down, but it's all on one track, so just bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh as uh the crowd remains rowdy as the lights dim and the curtains begin and as this happens Samara's cool voice pierces through the room and by the time the bass comes in the room is silent. The band comes in slowly as the crowd's full attention comes and settles on Samar. Um, can you describe her performance a little bit? Samara is very well versed in working a room. She makes her way off the stage, walking around the tables, having a cigarette lit, drinking an onlooker's drink, testing the bounds of the crowd, and always keeping her eye on one person or the next, but always being aware of her surroundings, never getting too close, never lingering too long, always making her way full circle back to the stage. As Samara kind of traipses through the crowd, um, there's at least minimum of three drinks that are spilt. Um, two draws dropped visibly. Um, and definitely one man fell out of his chair. Um, as you kind of make your way back to the stage to kind of wrap up the song, the crowd is just transfixed, intoxicated by the performance. The final note rings out and the set ends. The crowd erupts with applause and cheers as the curtains fall. On stage, the band buzzes with uh, energy from the set. As uh, you uh, kind of turn around and take a breath, they're just beaming at you. Like the, uh, <laughs> the bass is like shaking his head. You killed it. As... Uh, music in the crowd kind of starts back up outside the uh you head off stage and uh step backstage and head to the dressing room as the uh the door snaps closed behind you um you uh have a moment kind of to, to reflect on the performance and buzz for a moment. <laughs> ah, she was right. She was right. We killed it. We did it. Yes. Oh, I had nothing to worry about. It was all in my head. <sighs> Come on, Sam. Keep it together. We got this. We did this. Oh. And uh, as kind of that moment of elation and that reflection kind of dies down and you sit down take a moment and you look at the clock about 9 10. 
He said she'd be back by now. Right? Or... Mm, maybe I'll give her just a few more minutes. Maybe just ten more. <sighs> How long does she have in, in the back room before she has to, like, mingle with the crowd? She doesn't... She can leave. She doesn't have to mingle with the crowd at all. Oh, okay. 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 Um... That's completely up to you. Got it. She will she will wait in the back room for maybe another ten minutes or so in, in hopes that D will come back around. Um You kind of a little bit of a ten minute montage of bouncing between the dusty velvet lounge chair and <laughs> sleeping behind the folding screen to like get more comfortable. Uh, sitting back down at the ornate wooden vanity touching up makeup and uh 921 rolls around still no DeAndre I can't I can't stay here all night I gotta 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 head back what uh what did she say our next step was um are we, are we just leaving be tonight late? no there's a well the ritual is tomorrow mm. there's a whole slew of things that involve all that but got it so she will um leave in a very obscure note to D, letting her know that she headed back to their kind of safe house or, or what have you. And as you're kind of writing the note, um, there's a knock on the door. Thank goodness, it's D. Come in. The door opens and a uh, mustachioed, burly man with uh, zero hair um, kind of comes in. Oh. Uh, is uh, your manager around? Uh, she just stepped out for a moment. Um, I could take a message for her. She'll be here any minute now. Oh, I was just about <clears throat> your pay. Uh, uh, $10 is good, right? Excuse me? It's it's nineteen twenty. It's nineteen twenty. Ten dollars is uh, good, right? <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. For both of us? Okay. Uh well <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, alright. <clears throat> good. And uh he kind of thumbs out ten one dollar bills and pops it on the uh on the dresser before. did a great job uh turning that crowd around uh you know they're getting a little rowdy yeah. calm down they've been drinking a lot more since you sang appreciate that yeah absolutely absolutely that's that's our specialty um we uh we we hope to come back and bring a crowd again soon <laughs> looking forward to it let me know when uh well have your manager reach out to me uh, when you feel like it. Come on yeah, back. Abs absolutely. We'll have, do. Have you back anytime. Thanks. And uh, he kind of uh, he takes a step out and closes the door behind him. You where the hell are you? I don't even know if this is enough. Okay. She'll put the money in her uh, purse, her clutch thing, <laughs> and uh, she'll grab her belongings and uh, make sure Dee didn't leave anything behind, and she'll slowly make her way out. As you uh, step outside and back through the uh, back door, into the lot, the uh, the cotton clubs 
noise instantly muffles as it instead are uh, replaced with the uh, distant waves of uh, the nearby sh um, harbor and the calling of crows lining pretty much every building and and power line. Drunk and uh, tired men kind of stumble around the streets as uh, they head home away from the uh, the venue as uh, I think the uh, night begins. Um, and it's as you kind of like step out to go across the street um, a pearl white Rolls Royce zooms from uh, the direction of the funeral parlor and kind of uh, pulls into the lot double parking and uh, Deandra kind of steps out or rushing inside D? She'll, Samara will we'll look around and immediately go in the direction of D. As uh, you kind of go to ch kind of chase her a little bit, um, you enter back through the um, doors and the bouncer kind of opens the door for you once. You see her uh, questioning the band uh, on where you were, and they literally point at you just as you step inside. And she turns and is like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm late, dear. <clears throat> uh, but, uh, but we need to go. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, we'll talk about it in the car. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, uh, the, the, the owner, he gave me ten dollars. Is that is that sufficient? It was twenty. You don't have time for it right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. She'll just turn and head towards the towards the car. As uh you head back to the car and uh exit the lounge. The engine roars to life, and uh, she kind of quickly turns and uh, rumbles off the lot before speaking. Okay. D, are you okay? What's going on? Good news, bad news. Uh, bad first. Always bad first. Weatherwood caught wind. What's going on? Oh. The control team will arrive by morning. Oh, but but the but the but the ritual. There's still so much more we have to do for it. Well, luckily they're aligned with that part of it. But that's where the good news comes in. Hey. Your sister and the others will be working to weaken the ritual tomorrow, possibly fully disrupt it. They have all the time. Oh. Fortunately, sorry to make this a bad news sandwich, but anyway, um, the we'll have to be careful and. We're going to have to play both sides. What? I I know. But I did mention. Rehearsal was over. I meant it. Hey, listen. I like peanut butter and jelly. I like ham and cheese. I don't like this bad news sandwich. I don't like it. No. Okay. I don't like it either. Okay. Um... 
When you say we have to play both sides, D, what do you mean? Because, listen, I swear I'm doing my best, and and I and I'm and I'm here and I'm here for you. That's my sister, and I, she knows me. Like she knows the depths of me. So, I think it's time to make a choice. What? It's time for you to choose. This is where the rehearsal ends. You need to can choose if you want to continue down this path. I can drop you off at the train station tonight. Be out of here by morning. What? We can pick up the pieces after all of this from a... <clears throat> From an outside. No, 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 no. You're not dropping me off at the train station. I am, I am in this. I'm in this. You, you said it yourself. Once, once I step foot beyond a certain point, I'm, I'm within the threshold. There's no going back. I, I could, I could go and pretend like I haven't seen what I've seen. Like I haven't done what I've done, but, but I have, D. You can't just no, no. The answer, the answer's no. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I was afraid you'd say that. <sighs> You're sure this is, this is the, th the point of no return, as it were. I am, as I've said before willing to put my life on the line for this i can't go back i can't go back i don't know what my life would be like i don't i i can't i can't i can't go back to that i i i can't i won't it's this or it's nothingness and if this leads me to a, a obliteration then that's still nothingness, so I get the same end result, right? Right? Life's a show. Life is a big show that we're putting on. So let's let's just go to the final act. D, let's just go. So far from the He pulls and you into the drive of the funeral pot. He uh, <clears throat> opens the uh, front door and ushers you inside. As uh, you head inside and head upstairs, Andrew speaks once more. The organization I work for. Oh, hold on. Ambiance is wrong. Ambiance is wrong. Um, so, uh, as you head up the stairs of the funeral parlor, the outside world kind of quiets. Deandra speaks once more. The organization I work by the word for front leader over was mostly comprised of scientists, cultists, and knowledge seekers. We're looking to protect and archive <clears throat> the aspect, uh, esoteric aspects of our world. Over the last year or two, it has only devolved into a rat race of pragmatic bureaucrats and jackbooted thugs. Myself, along with a number of others, have maintained a, a loyal facade while quietly undermining the operations. We have to proceed carefully while we here, field agents, technically have authority over any subsequent team that comes in. They always are skeptical of auxiliary agents like yourself. But if all goes well, 
cover our tracks. Pieces will be in place to make our next move. A lot on the line. This is why we have to be careful. But that's up to you. But what if all goes wrong? What if they find out we're playing both sides? They find out that traitors of Tsar will be a fate worse. That's why we can't. Not an option. Now this. Get some rest. Tomorrow is going to. You too. And are you sure you're okay? It's okay. Fair. I don't think I really know anymore. Okay. Who's? I'm here, and I choose it too. Okay. Yeah. Tears well up in her eyes a little bit. Wallows down hard. Your throat. Steps up. I assume you'll be sitting up. It's <laughs> up Heads over to the threshold. Looks back. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, D. Good night. door closes. Latch. Click. Close. As the outside world beyond the grapes and curtain, blackout curtain, continue outside. Mara has a few moments to rest and relax. So Tamara is big on mental clarity, so she'll sit and kind of meditate and breathe for a bit um, before she crashes for the night, um, just to kind of keep her, her mind as clear as it can be. Just makes um for sure.
awaken to the strike thunder. And this fire outside. Um, and outside, a full, almost hurricane like storm blowing outside. In the rain, as you kind of get up and look out the windows, the mobs have more or less cleared. There's a few uh, groups that still patrol slowly and occasionally looking for the, the lost girl and the people who murdered the sheriff. Um, but as you kind of look outside, you see uh, four shiny black Model T's roll through the rain and park on the street outside. As you look on, they exit the vehicles and approach the main door of the parlor. And you hear downstairs that the door opens. They file inside. Behind them, a woman blanks. Holding it up. Sorry, I was muted. Oh. Oh. <laughs> My bad. <You're> <clears throat> <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, Ava shakes off her umbrella. She's currently wearing, I think trench coats are in this year, so she is also wearing a trench coat uh, suit under um, her hair tied up in a smart bun, uh, of course wearing signature investigator looking fedora. Um, she shakes out her umbrella and hands it off to one of the guys without looking, um, reaches into her pocket and pulls out a cigarette and lights it indoors. A little uncaring of whether or not it is allowed indoors. It's 1920. Everybody smokes everywhere. <laughs> I figured, yeah. So <laughs> she, I was rolling this up like the entire time. So oh, perfect. <laughs> she lights, she lights her cigarette. It's not real. It's paper. Um, she lights her cigarette, takes a puff, and kind of scans, gives a, a room, the room, a, a slow and and purposeful scan. Uh, you, um, you stand in like a funeral parlor. There's a small, um, well, small doors to a what looks like an elevator that leads down. There's a staircase built into the wall on the right that leads up to a hallway and presumably some bedrooms. And then the uh, you're kind of like in a large foyer area. There's a double French door at the back of the room that is closed right now, but presumably opens up into the proper going area and uh, there's a of course the uh, breezeway behind you this use this is where Samara was staying at or they stayed somewhere else they're, they're both staying parlor. oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> uh, you know Weatherwood just takes over any building or government building if they have abandoned building they'll just buy it to set up a uh, forward operation. Got it. Okay. Um, and this is around where the ritual is supposed to happen? Yeah, it's this is like in the center of the town that the, this cult has taken over. And presumably on the ground. Okay, so the I'm so sorry, Moon. I, I think uh, some of the events are a little um, mixed up in my brain. It's also like is this... a session you never, a season you never played in or saw. So like, it's all good. This wasn't the scene we talked about, right? Or is it? Uh, where with the with the lines? Yeah. Yes, but you you need a sim rep first. Got it. Okay, so um, Ava scanning um. She looks to each of uh, her men, um, takes a, a long drag from her cigarette, puffs it out, and says, What's the situation, Jack? 
Um, Deandra's downstairs, and I assume you ask her if she's been here. Got it. So she's heels clicking along the tiles. Yeah. Um, she takes the elevator, elevator, I assume, <laughs> the elevator down to uh, the floor that Deandra's on. Um, cue elevator music. Mm-hmm. And it's a little... <laughs> It's a little crammed in here with uh, all seven of us. Um, yeah. But when the doors open, it's the Winter <laughs> we... Soldier in here, just like <laughs> none of us seem to mind. We've been doing this for a long time, us in this group. Mm-hmm. Um, we file out of the elevator, walk down the hall to the room. I presume uh, sardine soldiers sure. um, that I presume that Deandra's in from the information we got, and give it a quick and curt rap on the door. Um, as you knock, uh, Deandra takes a moment and um, her silhouette kind of hits the, uh, the frosted glass window as she approaches and opens the door. Oh. Didn't hear you come in. I'm sorry. Didn't hear you ring. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, Deandra, Deandra Wright, running the my associate upstairs, my ox, Samara to me. Wasn't expecting you so early in the morning. I... Behind her, there's a uh, a corpse on the uh, on the table, being autopsied. Presumably, you see a little bit of a uh, incision in the uh, in the skull. Um, so the, uh, Ava kind of breezes past Deandra, very casually says, guys, D, D, guys, <laughs> and doesn't really bother giving their names. Um, Just and nods. looks at the, <laughs> and looks at the corpse taking another drag of her cigarette and says, so what do we got here, D? I had a uh, specialist come in last night to, um, Try an experimental procedure, and it seems that through trip hanning, we can we found that there are small parasites growing in the afflicted some of the uh, local townsfolk. This is the same disease I reported about that seems to be very fast acting, starts uh, fever symptoms, and has been known to. In later severe stages, cause coma almost like sleep. Poor fucking bastard. Who was this? Uh, one of the locals. Um, well, visitor. Apparently, the local cult has used. One of their assets to lure artists in. With them, they growing the things. I presume she knows the ritual is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And this is all for the sake of the ritual that's coming up, or that they're preparing for. Yes, it's like nothing I've seen before, and usually the normal chance, but this is almost, it's all hard to say, not the best, but it's like they're farming these things in their victim. Artists, huh? I guess they haven't suffered enough, huh? Seems that way. Uh, she turns to her men and goes, "Well, let's get everything set up. We got a lot. We got a big day tomorrow." And they, they nod and begin to uh, head back to the car, grabbing uh, the equipment and station devices, radio. And with a, a touch of familiarity, um, she hands. She kind of proffers the cigarette over to Deandra. 
Danger takes it and takes a drag. Let's introduce you to uh, my ox. Do it. <clears throat> First impressions? High hopes for this one. Always good to hear. But uh, she uh, leads you up the elevator. Another sardine trip back upstairs. <laughs> um, the men head out and start carting uh, various boxes, crates, uh, into the parlor. Um, and I assume at this point, Deandra either is downstairs or wanders downstairs. So Samara, I said Deandra. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> is that accurate? Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. So uh, Samara heads uh, comes down the stairs as you kind of um, come back up in lobby and eat for the first time. Deandra kind of steps forward. Uh, this is the lovely Samara Domenge. He is a singer and a very talented subterfuge. Um, Mara? This is Eva. Eva, it's a pleasure to meet you. Don't be so nervous, Samara. It's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> She'll, Samara will kind of give D a side eye, like, who's this boss bitch in our kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> she gives you, this is the mama now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay mama. <laughs> um, has, has they, have they performed in that club a lot? Um, or is that like the first time? No, they've performed like a few times at that place. Um, okay. While they've been in um, town. Why do you look so familiar? Um, I know you sing at the club. You have a beautiful voice, Amara. Thank you. I'm I sorry I missed it. tonight's show. <laughs> no worries. I was nervous as hell, to be honest, but... It was a good show. It was a good show. You would have enjoyed it. I bet I would have. Now, what is your take on this on this situation? It was always nice to get the perspective of new eyes. I'm here for a lifeline if you need anything. For sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um if oops, sorry. If I'm understanding this is similar to what we kind of saw uh, exploring the caves with her sister. Yeah. Um, so basically this is like the second to last episode of the first season where mm -hmm. everything was going down. It's just mm -hmm. from this perspective. Got it. So Samara has been here for a few weeks. She knows about the cult. She knows about mm -hmm. Sardonicus. Mm -hmm. Um, is she aware of what's happening with these mind worms, or is she still pretty pretty new in that regard? Pretty new in that regard. You're aware of the meta of it. Mm -hmm. of the there's something they're doing something to people and it involves the ritual, fueling the ritual or something like that. You mm -hmm. understand that? But mm -hmm. Deandra spared you the details. <laughs> Got it. Just because it's not in your wheelhouse. Got it. And it's Eva, not Ava. I just want to make sure I say that right. Yeah. Okay. Judges? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume it's Eva if it's Evangeline, so that's what I think. Right. Ah, no. okay, gotcha, gotcha. Nice, nice. Um, Eva, in all honesty, I'm, I'm not very well versed in this quite well, but I know this is something bigger bigger than, than me, bigger than us, and I just feel like there's a shift 
there's a shift in the energy around us and I, I, I don't even know where to begin. I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not much help right now. Um, Eva kind of stares at her. Nothing, um, you know, negative or mean, but she seems to be staring without actually staring because it's bringing her back to that day. And she sees a lot of herself in Samara right now when she, that night, she lost her mentor and things shifted for her. And after almost an uncomfortable amount of silence, she kind of gives Samara uh, a, a small but warm smile and goes, you're going to be just fine. If Deandra trusts you, I trust you. Don't worry. This is a nasty situation from what I gleaned off of the report. We're going to have we're going to have a fun day tomorrow, but we'll see what happens. It is today. Today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, this afternoon. <laughs> uh, but uh and uh well, Oh no, I was just going to say why. Thank you for trusting me and and I'm as I've told Dee, I'm 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 here to to do whatever it takes to put my best foot forward. So you just let me know. Of course, of course. And I look at Dee and I kind of just nod and be like and say, "We ready?" I look at my guys. <laughs> Hip, so hip, 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 um, nods and just, well, me tell you the full situation as I know it right now. As of 24 hours ago, the VIP was kidnapped and the local sheriff was killed. Suspects have been identified as Georgia Schultz, William Graves, Olivia Domingue. And Rory Shack. We had them tracked down to a local motel, but before we can move, the mob spooked them, and they've been on in the wind ever since. Without the VIP, the ritual will fail, and all the work we did to put her in place will be. Fr um, the one of the names catches Ava's attention, and she sort of, very briefly glances uh at samara but decides not to ask um although the question is written on her face of one of the names that was listed as um, as deandra says olivia domingue i imagine eva's eyes just snapped to samara real quick um but of course not um <laughs> And with that, uh, Dan just looks to Eva and says, So, how do you want to handle this? Uh, um, Q Ava flicks. <laughs> Q, Q lines. <laughs> um, Ava flicks her current cigarette over to the nearest trash just to light up a new one. Um, glances at each of her men and starts pointing and says, Jim, Jack, I'm going to need established roadblocks on every single road leading out of this town. Um, more, look out at the train, the train station. Uh, keep your eyes out for anything suspicious. Cosmo, get the Rockport deputy on the line. See if we can't get this mob reined in for our purposes. Carl, yeah. keep the car warm. Try not to touch anything this time. You two, take me to the kidnapping scene. Yeah, gestures to you. And um, as the men file out, uh, leading with their commands, one one of the two men uh, stay behind, one of which takes their coffee and pours it in the trash can where the cigarette that uh, Cobra just or Eva just threw over started lighting up some napkins. Um, he just kind of pours uh, his coffee out on that. You know, pr uh, Smokey the Bear style. Um, <laughs> and uh, as uh, everybody files out and Deandra, well, sorry, Tamara and Deandra lead Eva to the uh, 
patrols. Men begin to uh, take off to their various destinations, and you head to uh, head north to uh, north of town, the uh, the church parish where thing occurred. I want to just check in my timing here. All right, we got one more scene, then we'll take a break. Um, so as we move forward, <sighs> rain flecks off the windshield as your tires crunch on the gravel. Wind your way off the main road and approaching the crash. Uh, bramble and brush kind of roll past the windows. On either side of you, as uh, just beyond the winding path, you can make out the door on the horizon. Um, the rain continues downpouring as uh, drops of water kind of bead on the windshield. And as you kind of emerge from the uh, dirt road, you spot a small house. With uh, where two silhouettes stand on the porch, uh, under the porch, smoking cigarettes in the uh, in the rain and half light. As the car rolls to a stop, um, both you and the G-men behind you um, exit your vehicles and make a beeline for the front door. Ladies. Um, I turn to Samara um, and give her just a quick wink. You ready for this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's born ready. Woke up ready. Go. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> so um, walk up to the house. Um, do we know who the two people are? No, they look like... Uh... Look like they're just here to look over the house. Um, probably attached to the cult in some way. They just look like oh. Corrigan. Okay, so nothing particular stands out about them? Yeah, they don't have any tentacles or anything weird. Great, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> For now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was with her hands in her trench coat, she nods to the two of them. I'm assuming, are they men? Uh, um, what was that? Sorry. Were they were they men, both of them? Yes. Um, so she gives the a two of them an uh appraising look and says, Do you gentlemen mind if we take a look around? Uh they kind of eye you and like their their brows furrow for half a second before they see uh um they recognize Deandra. Like, oh um you know, it was Sidonicus. Uh yeah. That's fine. Um, anything you need to know? Tell me everything you know about what happened. Well, he kind of uh, gestures to his uh, buddy who has just the biggest, like, bruise on his face. His face is just swollen. His <laughs> eyes, like, sealed shut almost. Eesh. He's just like, well, this fucking beluga over here got his ass kicked by some kidnapper. Apparently got manhandled by him. Embarrassing. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, snatched the, the pastor's kid from downstairs. Did you get a good look at him, big guy? Uh, built like a tank. <laughs> Had a face like a truck, you know. Hmm. All right, well... Thank you, gentlemen. Let's go take a look inside and just nod at Samara and, and D. And I uh, point to Samara and I go, after you? Absolutely. And Samara will walk in, um, trying not to show her, her nerves, um, just trying to take the lead and, and go with confidence. Um, as you step through the uh, threshold and into the um, into the small kind of 
small wood house. Um, you step into the uh, into a sitting room, and on the floor there's tossed and broken furniture littering the place. On the floor, spatters of a uh, crimson glint in the lamplight, and the door to the basement is a uh, is a jar, but you see that it's been heavy bolted from this side three times. There's definitely a broken coffee table and um, a lot of debris. Stuff. You said the door to the basement was bolted down on this side? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, all right. So try like to keep what barn down, door there, down there. Mm. Okay. Like heavy bolt. <laughs> Or like one of them big barricades that you can just like <laughs> move out of the way kind of thing you can tell they wanted oh. to do that but they didn't have enough like room to mount it <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> jesus what happened in here something absolutely cynical <laughs> this place is a mess eva Shakes her head a little and lights another cigarette and tries not to think about what this place reminds her of. Um, she glances around um, and turns to Samara and asks, in the spirit of getting the new blood accustomed, <laughs> um, asks her, so what do you think? Samara closes her eyes and just kind of takes a few deep breaths to clear her mind to um, kind of get rid of the the obvious clutter of what's around her and she just tries to tries to focus in on on any clues anything that would give her a hint as to what was there or, or can you roll me a spot hidden check, please? Green or purple? Sorry. Uh, green. I want it to be purple, but this is a better color, but it's green. <laughs> oh. Fail. <laughs> oh, dang. It is only two points. Do you want to spend two luck? It's true. Sense. Why not? Let's do it. Okay. So as you kind of peruse around, it's you don't see much. Kind of kicking around things, and it's almost like the wind blows in from the from the storm a little bit, catches the door, it swings open, and as this occurs, um, some of the debris kind of uh, caught in the wind and. Something lands on your foot. Ooh. It's a small little square piece of cardboard? Paper? Hmm. And as she will... as you kind of look down, you see uh, it's a matchbook. Hmm. She'll pick it up and turn it over in her hand identify where the matchbook uh, came from, who... It uh, is a smushed matchbook. Um, there's only a few matches left, but it, it says Fort Memorial Hall. Mm. Okay. You know that, well, the person who took the kid probably dropped this, but that would lead them to your sister. Hmm. What do you do with the matchbook? She's very, very tempted to keep it to herself, but she promised she would be on her best behavior. So she's going to gently walk over to D and say, I, I think, um, 
I think they know a lot more than what we initially believed or were aware of. Um, he kind of gives uh, her brow furrows for a moment. So. Friends? Mm -hmm. They've been watching more than what... And she'll kind of truncate her words and, and look back and make sure that she's in good company with it's a little Eva? close. It's a little close. They're in ear, uh, Eva's definitely in earshot, and uh, the agents also are kind of chatting with the men outside and uh, mm -hmm. kind of hanging around the door. At the moment, I would say I'm not... I'm looking around, although, like, you know, the, the ambiance is still there, and I'm still, you know, kind of sort of listening, but yeah. I'm taking scope of the the situation and looking at anything that I think might be worth looking into. Okay. Has anything caught your eye yet? Did I see her pick the matchbook up? Let's throw a spot hidden. Think... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what, what happened? I have, I have my stuff minimized. Uh, Dang it. <laughs> that was a big, fail. a big fail. I ain't using any luck on them. <laughs> he was just like, it ain't worth it. it's not worth it. There's no evidence on the ceiling. Let me just double check. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, nope. mm, where nope. is anything? <laughs> nope, no evidence um, there. <laughs> no, oh my goodness. Um, but you, so <laughs> I'm looking around just trying to take scope of stuff. Okay. Um, so I may or may not be aware of conversation happening, especially if you're using code <laughs> stuff like what oh, the fuck oh, <laughs> uh, code language. Yeah, so um, Samara will turn back to D and just push the matchbook into her hands and say, I think there's a lot more to this that our teams are aware of and leave it there she uh thumbs the uh matchbook silently for a moment flipping it over and pretty much as she turns her hand it is flight of hand master d Ooh, trying to get like that. <laughs> so, with that, um, you do next. I don't want to investigate this uh, latched. You said basement door. I definitely want to investigate that. Um, as you kind of head over to the door, um, you see that, um, as you kind of, it's just slightly ajar, you can, it's, but it's closed over. And the bolts are all, um, well, one of them is old and is, has that little bit of worn, worn look to it. The other two are fairly new, um, probably only maybe a week or two old. Um, and... They're like they they went to the hardware store to get the heavy duty bolt. Like this is supposed to like keep a whole barn door closed. As you open the door, that's where things get a little weird because the whole inside of the door seems chewed or maybe pecked. Not really sure, but there's just mm. a lot of um, splinters. And in, like damage on the back of the door. Hmm. She will. Samara will call over uh, Eva and D to look at the damage on the back of the door, and uh, she will kind of make her way further into the space below. As you uh, head down the stairs, the 
other two examine the door, seeing damage on it. Dandra's... Dandra seems unbothered by it. Like, it just clicked immediately for her. And she kind of, like, looks... Oh. Um... Rose? Hmm. Um... Ava is surveying the damage, too. She has leather gloves on, but she runs her hand kind of on the door where it looks like it was either chewed or pecked. Um, is this damage she might recognize from maybe previous cases? Nothing quite like this. Um, there has been other cases where... There's been other cases where numerous animals have been panicked and like will take a, like break down walls like all sorts of stuff um so it's not unheard of that it would be a bird bird you know a bunch of crows the, the strange thing is how did they get in the basement hmm. that's probably the strangest thing but there's perfectly logical logical explanations to that so not completely implausible hmm. okay I think you might be. Wait, did she say that out loud? <laughs> okay. Crows. Oh, I didn't know if D, D oh, yeah. said that out loud. Yeah. D, D definitely said that out loud. Oh, okay. And I, um, she rubs her hands against the the broken wood, kind of shrugs and says, "I think you might be right, but what are they doing in the basement?" She shrugs. As uh, Samara leads and the others follow down and descend into the basement. Something floral and uh, sweet mixes with the stale and musty basement air. Reach the box. Inside, a small table is set with cold tea. The complete set is still there. And he's still in the glass. Along the walls, uh, between two um, small basement windows that are have iron bars on them, um, the shattered glass. There is in between those. There's a bookshelf filled with various encyclopedias, tomes on folklore and myth. What the hell kind of bird reads and drinks tea? Curious. Very curious. Um, Samara will go to the bookshelf to see if there are any books of interest that have been uh, focused on. Maybe some out on uh, the tea table or floor. You notice on the bookshelf, there's one that's collect has like significantly less dust on it. And it's called the, well, it's a pretty big tome. And it's called the Odin Edda. Mm. As you uh, slide it off and kind of open up the first page, you realize that it's a uh, collection of Norse myths and legend. One of the uh, one of the corners is dog-eared because the child is a heathen. And um, <laughs> <laughs> as you kind of flip to that page, uh, you see that it's. It's the page on Odin's legend. Uh, Hugh and Mug, the, the crows, his his ravens, out, his ravens on the ground, and all this stuff. Um, I am glancing over uh, Samar's shoulder at the page, and I kind of just go, "Hmm, it's a little on the nose." But when you say it's a little on the nose. Um, for lack of a better word, your brain, your synapse connect, and you get a brain blast um, from the past. <laughs> brain blast. And you realize, <laughs> right, and you realize this was one of, this was a rare tome that Father Joseph had. <gasps> and... Jeez. 
loved to to read about and stuff like that. So. Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> so, um, then looking over, uh, I was looking over her shoulder. I say that's a little on the nose, and I <laughs> stiffen behind Samara and <laughs> Father Joseph, <laughs> <laughs> and. You know, sort of almost haunted voice and a quiet voice say, Can I take a look at that? Absolutely. Um, um, I gingerly take it out of her hand like it's going to burn me if I <laughs> mishandle it and look through the book. Um, I swear this is... And I kind of look at D, and I look at Sa uh, Samara, looking back at D, wondering if she would know my trepidation. Probably not. But oh. I glance. <sighs> D, I. I swear this belonged to Father Joe. I don't know how, but it did. He read this book. She she takes a moment, like blinks three times. Been twelve years. I, I know. I just, I have never been so sure of anything. Not in the last twelve years, but this belonged to him. And she kind of like locks your eyes real quick, and it's like, you can confirm, right? Eva or Eva sort of swallows hard because she has, for the past twelve years, avoided looking back into that. Um, whatever possessions owned by Father Joe, she avoided. Um, but now she will take off her glove. Um, try to still the trembling from her hand because she doesn't want to look weak in front of the new blood. Um, <laughs> uh, pockets her... <laughs> <laughs> uh, pockets her glove. Um, gives Deandra one last glance, almost pleading. Not sure for what, but maybe for emotional support. Who knows? Because the only person in the world that knows what this means is D. Um, and then she touches the book. As you push the book, go ahead and give me one of your lovely, lovely psychometry rolls. Green or purple? Green. Always green. Always green. Please? Maybe. Please? Yes! Oh my god, that was on the dot! Okay. So, as the world falls away, Around you, all of it, all of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> um, the you're brought back to a train ride, a tarot reading, a weird cabin in a weird wood. And, but it's all from a different perspective. You're looking at yourself, seeing yourself oh. in Deandra. You see the trees. You hear your voice calling. The tree, you find yourself disappearing in the roots. And somehow, going deeper and deeper into the tunnel, crawling on your belly. As pretty much all but darkness happens, you, you feel things you cannot see. Hear what sounds like deep ocean currents and the phosphorescent glows of creatures. 
here and there. And as you emerge and float in the ether, a great green city lays before you down in the valley. Suddenly you are sailing on a sea of stars. Islands long stretching away lit by as it cuts its way through the currents. And all the while a certain filament has taken form in the sky. Slowly over time, this and as your ship finally, your odyssey that has lasted for the last however many years comes to an end, you reach the shores and see a four peaked mountain horizon. And as you see this. Everything snaps back in. And you're back in the basement. With a loud gasp, almost in pain, uh, Ava steps back and, without conscious thought, drops the book, uh, her cigarette, her hands are visibly shaking. Go ahead and give me a sanity check. Uh, ba 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 ba. Good. Maybe. maybe. I think. Maybe. Anyway, Pretty low. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. Success. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, um. So you're gonna take um one would be one d four of sanity. One d four. Hey. Three. Okay. So, as this happens, you're sapped three sanity points um, from going undergoing a journey through the other side um, and Father Joe's journey to madness or through madness. Oh, my God. What the fuck? What the fuck, do you? You okay? Did you get uh, Sam? Sam will reach out to kind of brace Eva. Like, hey, are you? Are, what happened? What just happened? Deandra kind of like moves your hand, like, uh, well, you're wearing long sleeves, right? Yeah. Okay. Trench you're coat. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> um, Deandra kind of like reaches out to like kind of stop your hand, like as a as a gut reaction, but stops yourself. Oh, okay. Um. <sighs> Uh, trying to shake herself out of it, she closes her eyes and tries to capture everything she saw. Um, I'm assuming with her studies and everything, does she have an idea of what she saw, or...? You can roll me a Cthulhu Mythos, but right now your your brain's working hard to, like, protect you, so... Ah, okay. That's where it's just, oh, what are the details? They're running through my fingers, oh my god. Yeah. Mm. Brain's like, oh, oh you don't gosh. need this information. <laughs> <laughs> These rolls are rolling today, you guys. Okay, so <laughs> we we got we got all the bad ones out last time. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. Yeah, I like yeah, failed yeah. every roll, Melly, before. <laughs> oh, I used you know. so much of my luck that first. One. <laughs> um, so so uh, you, she's. You oh, go ahead. Sorry. From from the Cthulhu Mythos roll, you understand that you went to the Dreamlands. What? You haven't seen I... the Dreamlands firsthand before. You just did. Sure, yeah. Oh man. Okay. It's a trip. Um, <laughs> is this something that feels? If it's the Dreamlands, so I'm wondering: is this something that feels good, dreamy? Is it dangerous? Like, yes. To all of the above. All the above. Okay. Um, <laughs> that son of a. Bitch. It's, it, basically, think the Feywilds if it was written by H.P. Lovecraft. Ah, 
Oh, okay. Dangerous. Yeah. Dreamy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. How the fuck did you end up there? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Samara. I... I'm this. I'm just trying to catch up. I, I feel like a lot has happened in 0.5 seconds. <laughs> uh, more than that's Accurate. happened in 12 years. Um, it, I lost a friend 12 years ago, and I've been looking for him for a long time, and now I know where he is. But I'm sorry. We'll worry about that for another time. We have a... We have a case on our hands. And... Oh god, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just gonna ask, are you gonna be able to keep going? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry about me. Um, let's focus up on this case. Uh, what made you pick this book up off the shelf? Well, it was obviously the, the most um, loved book on the shelf. My... My sister loved books, and my uncle loved books, and they, they shared that. So I, I just know when a book is very well loved. Ava pauses, and maybe against her better judgment, but with as much sympathy as possible, says, "Your sister. This, this is what this is all about." <laughs> Not necessarily. No, it's a long, complicated story. Um, probably something for another day. Agreed. Um, uh, as far as the book goes, um, I'm assuming I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> or you're a government agent literally anything can be your property if you fill out the right paperwork word um so i'm going to <laughs> uh i'm gonna close the book uh gingerly um kind of hold it hold it up to uh d and samar and say if you don't mind i'll hold on to this one yeah absolutely um hands it off to one of her guys uh, who puts it in a briefcase for <laughs> briefcase for her, and I go. The boys are upstairs, but as you oh, finish this, they uh, come. Oh, one, of them, <laughs> one of them comes down the stairs, and uh, oh. he kind of like it's the door squeaks open kind of excitedly, and like you mm -hmm. hear the steps kind of. They got the girl. And that's what? where we're going to take our break. Oh, I was like, what, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> all right, sick. Um, all right, but when we come back, we'll be picking up more or less where we left off. We're going to take a quick 10 minute break for our own bladders and mental health. Uh, we'll be back here in about 10 minutes. Might be a little longer, might be a little less, who knows? Um, and I will leave you some tunes and we'll see you soon. Sweet. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's called Cthulhu Coal Origins. It's also Cobra. Cobra. I <laughs> <And Nelly. laughs> um, we are going to return. We're getting back into the second half of our episode here. Refreshed. Ready to go. Um, let me get the lounge music brought down and brought, bring the, the grungy noir music in. Yes, all the grunge. <laughs> um, let's see. As Deandra bolts down the, uh, side roads and streets as trees, brick, and brick buildings and colonial style homes flit by the windows. The car zooms down the small village roads towards 
the uh, center of town in the Rockport Memorial Hall. The engine of the car rattles up as the uh, tires screech slightly as you turn through intersections and around bends. You pull to a stop with, as the tires screech slightly as you spot the uh, huddled group of G-men on the side of the road outside the hall. Two sit on a nearby bench, treating a minor gunshot wound, while the others turn and uh, watch you as you, uh, well, turn to you as you uh, exit your cars and approach. Right. Uh, give Samara and Dia a nod as we walk toward the G-men. And I look toward the one that uh, was shot. Um, you doing all right? Uh, it's, a, it's a gut shot, but it looks like a through and through. And he's like, mm. just a graze. <laughs> Better out than in, I always say. <laughs> it's good to say. <laughs> I'll have to use that in a movie someday. <laughs> oh. All right. And uh, as uh, Eva heads forward and begins talking, Deandra kind of pulls Samara back a little bit, um, kind of grabbing her, kind of elbow around your your arm, kind of leads you out of earshot. Look, I know uh, Eva is a uh, part of Weatherwood, but I don't know her allegiances as of right now, but things are going to get real tense real soon, and I think this is the last time I'll be able to put a word in your ear. Now, we have to make sure the our orders are to make sure the ritual is completed and to bring Gabby in alive at all costs. Weatherwood cares about results, not casualties. Loss of life is just an occupational hazard for us. I have a feeling our friend will be back. Our friends will be back soon, and uh, I need to make sure these agents don't stop them. And she, uh, you don't even know where it came from, but you feel a cold, some cold metal hit your, uh, in, hit the palm of your hand. And uh, as you open your uh, hand, a silver twenty-two with a suppressor is uh, in it. What? From there, we just need to make sure Gabriel, su uh, Gabby, survives the night. Okay. Okay, D. Can I count on you? Of course. Of course. Of course. Okay. And, uh... She turns and heads back and, uh, bolsters up a little bit. You, did you clear the building already? And, like, they start muttering and there's a little bit of interaction there. I hate doing inner role play. Sorry. I hate talking to myself. It's odd. Um, <laughs> but, uh, she starts kind of, uh, spouting off orders and making sure everybody's uh, moving along with uh, Eva. Leaving you there with the, uh, the pistol on the side of the room. Sam will just kind of look up at the sky for a second and just think to herself, what the hell did I walk into? And then she'll solidify her resolve and press forward make her way in the house as uh you step over to the memorial hall um and look inside the furniture is scattered there's a man in the uh by the bar you hear a little bit of wheezing from behind the bar and the place is shot up 
uh, spatters of blood on the wall and on the floor. Many of the tables are overturned. Hmm. This place looks extremely roughed up. No sign of your sister or her friend. Um. You hear kind of behind you uh, as uh, Evo kind of asked for one of the men to report. And say, well, we uh, secured the package and send them off to Sardonicus. Um, so all we have to do is control the perimeter and make sure uh, there's no more breaches. Take out these uh, rogue agents and uh, be good to go. Um, so Eva will we walk to the bar you said is where the wheezing came from, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, walk over to the bar, uh, round it to see who's behind it to find. You find <laughs> um, Colonel Hall. Um, he is a older man, older gentleman, probably in his like late forties, early uh, mid fifties, maybe. Um, um, mustache. Um, the gun that he is kind of like reaching for is like five feet away, been kicked away. Um, and he kind of like is just slowly. You can hear it because you've heard it before. He's slowly just pumping blood into his lungs, breath by breath. Or into his chest cavity, I should say. Uh, is he the kidnapper? Do we know, or he's he's he was with them. He was uh, an accessory. Oh, was... oh okay. <laughs> um, so Eva walks behind the bar, um, kind of crouches next to the old man, takes a big old drag of her cigarette and blows it away, and says, oh, "You ain't looking so good, old man." <clears throat> I've seen worse. <laughs> <coughs> he coughs up blood. Uh, offers up her cigarette to him and says, So where did your accomplices go? I heard one of them was built like a tank face of a truck, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, there's this place in uh, France called Somme. That's where they went. Hmm. <clears throat> And I can trust your word. Why? Same way I can trust yours. <coughs> I guess you're right. Boys, see to this man, won't you? Uh, he's just bait. <laughs> Try not to die on me, old man. She gets up and walks over to Samara. Shrugs. Psalm Paris? No significance to me. Uh, th let me fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no significance directly to you, but significance to the world at the time. World War I was just only three years, two or three years ago. Um, mm. And Psalm was like one of the biggest battles in mm. France. Oh. Like over like one like almost a, a million people died there. So that's currently happening now. No, that's that's been it's oh. been years. This guy is a veteran. Is, is oh. what that, that that information points that this guy's a vet. And he basically told um, you to go fuck yourself. I should have known that. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Noted. Noted. Um. We're not going to get anything out of him. Unless we employ certain measures. Um, this guy seems like he would rather inhale all of his blood rather than tell us anything. Seems like it. Is there anything else about the room that stands out to us? Can um, we both roll spot hidden? <laughs> you don't have to. It looks like this room's <laughs> been lived in overnight. Um, like, 
multiple of the bunks have like dirty socks or like up rolled up uh, jackets for pillows that things like that um and it just kind of you, you can even see one of them that's just a big impression of a, a man the size of a tank maybe uh mm -hmm. that was in, impressed into the the bench uh pull out the cushion that kind of thing my god they weren't kidding about this guy <laughs> Hmm. As far as psychometry goes, does it have to be a very specific object, or is it too broad to... Well, I figured if it's a bench, I might get too much out of it. <laughs> yeah, for the, psycho so the, for the psychometry, yeah. you know, just from living with it your entire life, mm -hmm. you would know that it only really works on things that are significant, mm -hmm. or have some kind of significant attachment a person if it's a person's attachment that allows you to access their memory right okay is essentially the the meta of that got it okay just double checking um so with nothing standing out um and you said the package was already secured yes oh goodness they were working with the mob to find them, so the mob were part of the cult, so. Mm. Here you go. The mob's part of the cult? <laughs> some, some of them. It's, it's um, one of those, the village is all, we don't know, they don't really know who's in and who's out. They were very paranoid about it. It was great. Mm. <laughs> oh my um so i turn to d um what's our next move well you and i are gonna go oversee the ritual and make sure nothing goes off without a hitch plus you probably need to see something for yourself samara if you could uh Stay out here. Maybe you can get a little field feel for the field work with uh Who are these gentlemen? And uh, she she points to the two that are going to stay. Samara, this is Jim. That's Jack. Jack, Jim, Samara. Hi Jack. Hi Jim. Hey. Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take care of you, Samara. And I, I point my cigarette to both of them. Nothing happens to her. You understand? They kind of like... One of them is very professional. He's like, yes, ma'am. The other one, you see actively like bite their tongue. He's like, <clears throat> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just pat Samara on the shoulder. Give her a nod like as of saying... You got this. <clears throat> Samara is going to uh, thank Eva and and kind of wave both of the both of the ladies off um, and head over behind the bar to try her hand at talking with. I forget his name. Yes. <laughs> Jim and Dad. Um, okay. So, um, as uh, you kind of wave them off, the uh, they head into the car, and uh, the taillights kind of disappear around the corner. Um, and out of sight. You and uh, the two agents are left behind in the rain, um, and they lead you back to the... Uh, Model T parked on down the uh, down the block, um, opening the uh, the back door for you, you and uh, offering to hold your umbrella as you get in. Thank you. As uh, the door closes behind, and uh, the men clamber into the driver's side and passenger seat, 
um, they uh, pull cigarettes out and offer you one. Mm, sure. As uh, you take one, uh, they offer the light, flicking their uh, Zippo and holding it up. And as you take that, they light their own cigarettes and uh, begin smoking as the uh, cab begins to swirl with smoke, keeping an eye on the front entrance of the hall. Occasionally you'll see a s small uh, town squad of uh, active people <laughs> uh, wander by in and out of the mist as uh, they patrol the streets in the rain. Occasionally you'll spot one eyeing you just a little too long they pass. It's uh, a few minutes and a whole cigarette, well, half a cigarette, before uh, the silence is broken. So, uh, are you a singer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a hobby of mine that uh, I became quite good at. You any good? I mean, obviously you said you are, but can you sing something for me? Right now, on on this car ride, I haven't even warmed up. There's Man, not not beautiful. professional. It's <laughs> fair. That's fair. We got a little bit of stuff to warm me up if you want. And he kind of like reaches into his thing and kind of tinkers a flask. Um, but uh, and the the other the the guy in the driver's seat, professional guy. Just kind of like glares at him, <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't say anything. And uh, he's like, "Well, f we'll fair with fair." Um, so, how do you get all uh, mixed up in this? How do you uh, assume? Um, how do you meet Miss Wright? We um. We cross paths and um, created our own history from there. Not, not really too much, too much to to, to say. But um, nothing, nothing too dramatic. Just uh, the stars aligned, if you will. Hmm. Stars are right. I heard that one time or two. But uh, a little on the nose, if you ask me. How so? And they they both kind of look at each other and just share a knowing look, and just like, ah, you. Once you're in this for a while, you'll you'll find out. And mm -hmm. uh, he goes to. He's like, so uh, what about any uh, sibling and like. As he says this, uh, the radio crackles to life in the uh, in the console. Samara, you've never actually seen one of these. You've seen like the prototypes in the in the shows for like the the radios that they're coming out with, which is cool. They have those gramophones and stuff. But as far mm -hmm. as like a a radio console that you can talk into, what the fuck? It's scientific, sci-fi shit. <laughs> um, at this point. So the radio crackles to life, and you hear over the uh, radio. Package is secured. Package is secured. Team two, what's your status? Over. And uh, like the guy picks up the receiver. Roger Nesta, this is Team Two. Uh, still on watch out for uh, suspects. Over. Confirmed. Over. <laughs> so um, <laughs> he kind of just puts the receiver back on. He's like. <laughs> so, uh, what was it? What were we gonna say? Oh yeah, siblings. Do you have any like siblings? Or? Uh, the, yeah, but what? Uh, what was? What was? Oh, what was that? <laughs> he laughs. He's never seen the radio before. He's like, it is a prototype. 
<clears throat> well, <laughs> yeah, you it the uh, radio waves transmit through that thing. Crackle through the the voice in, and then you mm -hmm. know, does the same way, thing on the way back. Wow! Goodness, that's that's incredible. Yeah, there's this guy, uh, uh, fucking uh, Tesla or something like that. He he does like <laughs> these prototypes, and like we we get them for the for the, the place, man. Nicola, goodness, how exciting! So, oh, goodness, where were we? Wait, do you do you have any siblings? What got you into this line of work? Uh, I believe that's what we were talking about. <clears throat> no, I think we were talking about your siblings. Like, do you have any siblings? Uh, me? <laughs> I am, uh... <clears throat> I'd like to consider myself just a, a child of the world. Hmm. And yourself? Ah. You know, I got, uh, three little brothers, you know? Three? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Goodness. Yeah. Well, one of them was alive. <laughs> you know, the other two, like, you know, it's, it's a farm. It happens. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. half is good. Half is good. Mama mm -hmm. always said. Good, good ratio. <laughs> you know, her grandma, actually... No, no word of a lie. I had sixteen children. Only one of them survived. I don't understand. Must be the. They, they say that the mines are good for them, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the mines are good for the kids. <laughs> All miners, but you know. I don't know if, how much of that holds up. I don't either anymore. Goodness, sixteen. <laughs> Um, so how, how long have you been in this, um, in business, uh, business, this line of work? Oh, about 16 years. 16? Mm -hmm. Quite a, that's quite a long time. Oh, yeah. And, and this kind of level of small talk goes on for well, another half hour. You go through another, like, two or three cigarettes, mm -hmm. um... And as uh, they go to toss their third cigarette out the windows and go into light a fourth, they're offering you one as well, of course. Cause what you do on a stick out. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll me a listen check. Ooh. Let me find it. Let me find it. That's good, right? Do, do, do. So many, so many panels. Yes, good. Hard, hard, hard success. Awesome. Yay. Hooray. Um, with that, you hear. It, it's like a high pitched whine that you can't quite place at first, but then you realize there's like, it, it's also in the storm and stuff, but you hear something almost roaring and as Ooh. it clicks over the next few milliseconds you realize it's a truck and as you look to your left you see an alleyway and just the dimmest hint of a light lights headlights in the uh in the fog uh a driver oh well you know anyway so like my grandma um i'm a dr uh, driver Driver, there's a, there's a, there's a truck. There's a, um, of uh, your, uh, I would love to hear about your grandmother more. We need the, is the driver awake? Is he awake? Sir, excuse me. And excuse me. As, as you kind of do this, the, uh, the driver's like, what, what? And he kind of turns to his right and looks back at you. It's, there's a, there's in the it, alleyway, there's a, and, uh. And now you, a, it's very audible now and they, turn their heads and you heard it before you could see it the, the truck billows and like bursts out of the fog oh god the men scramble for the doors drawing their weapons the, dr the driver levels the pistol firing off one shot while the other one 
steadies his aim on the roof and fans the hammer. Um, with that, the truck erupts from the fog. The windshield is riddled with bullets as it careens into the car. I need you to roll me a dex check. Oh my gosh. Uh, you said a dex check? Yes. Got it. Oh, do dodge. Even better. Yes! Oh, wait, hold on. I s uh, oh. Oh, that was half dex. My bad. Oh. Is it still a success? It's not a success. Yeah, the dodge. The dodge is still a success. Do you want me to do the... Oh, yeah. Um, so with that, um, you reach the door, open it. Um, which door are you going out? Oh, uh, uh, three, whichever, two, uh, one, the opposite of the truck. Okay. Left. Right. Sorry. Right. Yeah. I, I driver's side. Um, so yeah, you go out the right side and first open the door. And just as you, uh, are about to make it clear the car, the truck careens into the car. There's the renting of metal and sparks fly as the car tumbles violently to the side and you get struck and knocked backwards. As oh my God. you Shit. hit the sidewalk and your kind of head just kind of back hits, head hits a little too hard little bit of blurry vision you see uh the man has disappeared who was taking cover behind the car um probably underneath it mm. and the other man uh is currently writhing in the street the horns going off on the truck as you begin to lose consciousness oh my god what the fuck <laughs> oh this is some bullshit. You have one I'm last so action <laughs> before you, you uh, go out. My one last action? Yes. Um. Uh. Probably just to make sure I've got my gun tucked very, very deeply in my pocket. Okay. Sounds good. Um. You remember the. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you kind of tuck it away, making sure it won't get uh, seen and uh, lose consciousness as the rain kind of falls on your face and darkness ticks. Yeah, this is a bullshit. <laughs> as you come to, you hear muffled voices nearby as you open your bleary eyes. The back of your head throbs violently as you begin to gain your bearings. <sighs> it's dark out now. The car is flipped on its side, and you are kind of... It seems like somebody pulled you in to the uh, alcove of one of the shops nearby. Get you out of the rain. Samara will... Look for the the nearest wall to kind of put her put her back against, so she can kind of scope out who and what is around her. You see the uh, wreckage in front of you. The truck basically embedded into the side of the the, uh, the Model T. Model T's flipped over onto the sidewalk, and mm. there is a faint red. Um, Coming, well, it's raining, so there's a little bit of red something kind of mixing in and being diffused in the water along the sidewalk underneath that uh, car. Um, the man in the truck has been pulled off. Uh, the, <clears throat> the man in the truck has been taken off the wheel and is no longer uh, sounding the horn. And uh, has been, you can see him laying on the side of the near the truck in the street. Eesh. Um, and there's no sign of the other agent. Mm. Seems to have disappeared. As you kind of uh, get your bearings, a uh, car kind of comes around the corner, 
and the headlights stop on, well, turn on you, and uh, it comes to a stop with the rain um, pouring on the hood and attacking on the hood and windshield. Oh. So Mara will look for the nearest escape route away from the car, unless she recognizes it, which I don't know if she will in the dark, in the rain. Everything's a Model T right now, so it's like, it might be friendly, it might be foe. The fact that it's, <laughs> they got both headlights, good sign, good sign. Mm. Um, mm. It's not a truck, good sign, 50-50. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you gonna run and hide. Okay. She's gonna run and hide. Fair, fair. <laughs> As you kind of look at, uh, it turns you, and it starts heading your way. You uh, get up as quickly as you can and begin uh, running out into the rain uh, down the road and try to make it for the corner. The uh, car. Uh, kind of goes around the wreckage and uh, speeds up a little bit trying to catch it um, and uh, just taps the horn twice. I don't know if I can trust it. I don't know if I can trust it. I, I, I have no idea where I'm at. There's nobody here. <sighs> the cars pull around you and for a mo- sit for a moment before um, the door opens and uh, two, men's in- two men in suits step out and uh, approach you. Samara? Mr. Ming? I'm not going to get out of this alive if I run. Oh... <laughs> Yes. Yes, it's it's me. Thank God we <sighs> We lost contact with you a few hours ago. We couldn't leave until we were cleared. There was there was a a truck. There was a truck and and it rammed us and I got knocked across the fucking yard. Well, uh, I don't get on. Get out of the rain here. Get out of the rain, and he kind of like gestures you over to a, a uh, <sighs> kiosk that's got a little bit of a an awning over it. She'll slowly hobble her way over. All right, hold on, hold on. <sighs> got a flashlight? Guy hands him a flashlight, and uh, it's one of the military flashlights with the crooked like the the turn. <sighs> thing. Sorry, this is gonna suck, but I need to check. Look in the look in the check check the light. Oh. Ah uh, yeah 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 okay yeah you you might you might have a concussion, but it's gonna be okay. You just don't want to fall asleep right now. We're gonna Ugh. you're gonna be okay. Uh, hold on. Oh my uh, god. Little little bit of blood back there. Uh, mm. I need to check your scalp. All right. All right. It's it looks worse than it is. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a nice lump there for a little bit though. Oh. Good oh, to go. Like been, do, do you need medevac or an elephant? No, no. Just I just need to get out of here. I just. Where's Eva? Where's Where's D? Uh, they're over by the ritual center. They're wrapping up. Oh. Okay. Okay. Can, They'll be can, here with... can we go there? Where are we? We were, we were on orders to head to the docks. Apparently, the uh, suspects have taken off with the with the VIP, and uh, we need to head them off. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, can I can I get a head wrap, please? Uh, let's let's we can head that way. I just I just need a wrap, and golly. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. go. Hold let's, on. Hold let's on. Let's go. And he he just like does you up like a uh, um a little bit like snake solid snake you know 
<laughs> head wrap around the back. But the uh, mm -hmm. the the back of the bandage starts to like soak in the blood pretty quickly and kind of goes red a pretty quickly. But all right, just we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully, ble the bleeding should stop hopefully soon, and uh, it'll be red as rain. Sure, you good? Right. Yeah. Oh, zombie, no. Zombie, no. <laughs> oh. So yeah, uh, as uh, he uh, ushers you into the back seat, the doors close, and the the cavalry heads back, heads off to the docks. Um, the rain kind of begins to dissipate where only where once was pouring is now more just a mist the uh car rolls onto the uh docks with the on the uh on the wood and as the it parks uh, you exit the vehicles. You hear the uh, sounds of the waves crashing in on the docks. The distant sound of seagulls. Maybe not. Maybe not. It's actually the night. Probably wouldn't be any. <laughs> um. So yes. Together, you kind of wait in the uh, the half light of the docks, as you wait the apparent fishing vessel that's going to be uh, coming in. They offer you a cigarette um, as you wait, and as minutes pass by, you just see the pinprick of a ship on the harbor slowly growing on the horizon as uh you kind of finally get into um get a proper sight on them you see it's a being run by a small crew and uh as it comes into the docks the men uh you're joined oh sorry uh, as this kind of occurs, another uh, car rolls in and joins you with another two uh, agents. As the, the ship rolls into the dock and uh, you see the, uh, the men, the captain and the, uh, the small crew kind of um, bustling about the, the deck, you hear the men, your men, uh, quietly click off their safeties and chamber rounds. You said I, I hear the men doing... They're clicking off their safeties. Mm -mm. And chambering rounds into their guns. Got it. Got it. Huh. <sighs> Hold hold on guys. Why why are we why are we preparing for battle? I thought I thought we weren't looking for any casualties. Uh and you're new here. Casualties are acceptable. Results are all that matter. And uh a few of the uh G men step and hop aboard. Before the uh, ship even stops and begin lashing the dick, the ship onto the deck, the uh, captain comes and goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, guys! Whoa, whoa!" And before you can even stop it, you hear suppressed gunfire pierce through the night air, and the three-man crew falls to the deck. What the hell? Do you all even know who they were? D 
Did you even know what they were here for? Do you... Miss Domingo, you're gonna have to get used to this. Those are what's called witnesses, and we can't have those. And, uh... As, uh... The two men finish lashing the boat on the deck, the two that are with you begin approaching. Um, and go to board the, the ship. It's insane. This is insane. This is insane. These men are crazy. As, uh... They hop on, they, uh... Call out. We know you're in there. Come out with your hands up. Samara will kind of lean in looking for what she knows will be her sister eventually coming into view. As you uh, step onto the ship and you... Uh... Flank the men. They, uh, go it again. If you don't come out, we'll come in shooting. And you hear the first few reluctant steps come up the stairs. Georgia emerges first. Then Rory. And then finally Libby. And a small girl. 12 year old Gabby. Sam will look around to the team that she's with just to see if their fingers are on the trigger, if they're if they're about to repeat what they've just done. Oh, and yeah. she is they're, just they're holding moving in, her breath. They're moving in to uh, arrest everybody. And, uh, multiple of them still have, uh, their fingers on the pistols. Fingers on the trigger. She will, um, kind of stand by and try to be as strong as she can. As, uh, Livy emerges. He sees you, and here we will kind of fall into the scene that occurred at the end of season one between Tamara, Libby, Rory, and Jordan. Tamara postures, motioning the agents to arrest the remains of the group. Georgia bargains, pleading with the others to see reason. Livy seethes at the betrayal of her sister. And Rory, sick of it, takes matters into his own hands, puts a gun to Gibby's, Gabby's head. Not leaving here without her. Come on, there's no way out. There's no other way. It's your best choice. Don't care, you're, you're gonna have a dead fucking girl. This is what you want? Ugh. Results, it's all about results. It's what are we doing, results. boss? We, we need the girl alive. And they kind of step to move in. Rory pulls the hammer back. Wait, wait! Fuck. Ugh. At the at this point, do we have Georgia? Georgia ha is cuffed, and they slipped a back black bag over her head already. And she's like a bird, like... 
Just do the smart thing! Through the through the bag. Mm-hmm. We guys, we need these are the results. We we need the girl alive. We we've We'll just we'll just have to pull back and try again. They like mo like half of them furrow their brow. The driver uh, who survived, a little bit scuffed up, but he's alive, lowers his gun, and the others follow and step back, letting the others pass. As Rory, Livy, and Gabby climb into one of the Model Ts, they slam the door shut, speed away down the street. As the red glow of the taillights disappear around the bend, the men begin to mutter to each other. Georgia is restrained at the moment, her head in a black bag, her hands cuffed behind her back. And they begin muttering to each other. Would you like to do a listen check? Yes. Because I am nosy. <laughs> Oh! Shit. Damn. <sighs> With that. I'll never know. You hear little bits of words. It's like. Scabbit. You should. I'm like. What? What just. Just like little bits and pieces. Um. <laughs> the, uh. One who put the gun down first. Ma'am, what's the play here? We going after him now? No, there's there's no point. They're too frazzled. They'll they'll get rid of the VIP. I'm sure of it. Even though she's not really sure of it, but she sounds sure of it. Let's take this one. Let's take this one back. Let's get all the details we can and Move on. See where we can get the, the VIP next time. I don't... He kind of looks at the guys. He seems like he's like, Okay. I, I see where you're trying to put it. A few of them have just... Daggers in their eyes. Hands on hips. Hands on, Not hands on hips, but hands on hip. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it, guys. You're fucking pissed. But I said what I said. Let's move on. Move out. Now. She'll turn on her heels and walk away. And walk as confidently as she can. She's walking is... as confidently as she can. Luckily, they can't see her eyes. We're just going... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's uh... gotta know. <laughs> and, uh... As you kind of turn around, you hear uh, a bit of a struggle behind you. As <coughs> something like that, um, <laughs> and uh, three gunshots go off. The hell! As you turn around. Uh, Two of the three men, two of the four men, fall limply to the deck as the fourth dives and returns fire on Georgia, who has one hand with a very limp thumb shooting a pistol at them. Cuffs dangling from her wrist. Oh my. As, uh, the gunshots return, she takes them to the chest and slumps over to the railing, still breathing, pops one more shot off before getting shot two more times. Oh. And slumping.
The guy, the agent turns and it's like, what the fuck, she just broke her fucking thumb, man. Are you okay? Did you get hit? I'm, I'm, Sam will check herself just like a completely incredulous by, like, completely mind blown by, by what she just saw. She, uh, no hits, her heart's pounding a mile a minute. If she got hit, she wouldn't know, but no blood, no wet. It seems okay. No blood other than what? Was already there. Mm hmm. Oh, wet hair. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Fuck. It's, this is a fucking mess. Get. And the, the last guy, uh. Goes over and kicks the pistol away from, uh, Georgia. As, uh, headlights turn and cast long shadows across the deck. As uh, the Rolls Royce rolls down the dock and uh, parks nearby, Deandra and Eva exit the the vehicle and uh, scrapes across the dock to board and board the ship, eyeing up the scene. Sorry, on mute again. Um. Which one lived, Jack or Jim? <laughs> uh, I think, I think Jim's the professional. Okay. Jack is sloppy. Jack was the sloppy Got it. one. And he just disappeared after the truck hit the car. He went to get help. Oh, okay, okay. Um. So from where we're standing outside of the car, we pretty much see everything that's happened, or. You roll around like you heard gunshots in the distance. You knew that they're going to be at the docks. And as you kind of were approaching like a block or two away, you heard gunshots and gunshots and then another mm. gunshot. <laughs> and Georgia still has the hood on. Georgia took it off. Oh, I suppose she would to shoot. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so uh, Ava comes up to the scene wide eyed and trying to take everything in. And from a distance, she's staring at the body slumped over, and I look at uh, Jim and say, Is that fucking who I think it is? Fucking traitor herself, yeah. Uh, I look over to D, and uh, some, I'll look over to Dean and Samara, not really knowing what's going on, uh, and just openly ask, What the fuck is going on? What what happened? Where's the target? Where's the VIP? They 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 threatened the the VIP. They they threatened to to kill her, and and we didn't have a choice. If if we tried to take her by force, uh, the the tank with the truck face, he was gonna get rid of her. I look over at Deandra. We need. We didn't need her alive. Fuck. What direction did they go? They went down that street that way, and three of them got away. And it, it was just Georgia that tried to convince them to to stay and and work with us, but. It was a no-go. They, they would have all ended themselves. You said three others. Who were they? Did you see their faces? Yeah. Samara? Yeah. Did you know who they were? Um... Their sisters. Jim speaks. Cool. <laughs> she was being really avoiding when uh, we were asking about it. Uh, 
It's not exactly rocket scientist. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that they have the same last name. There's a conflict of interest here, boss. There's no conflict. There's there's no conflict. I'm I'm doing what needs to be done. I was there. Wait, you're um sorry if I'm also missing something, but I'm just gonna go with it. Um, your sister was here? He was with the VIP um and the Hank who threatened the VIP and it's not it's not a Eva, it's not a conflict of interest. I I could tell I, I could tell by how she looked that she meant business and they were all willing to go down and not give us the VIP. I I, I knew Ox. that. I felt that with everything in me. I'm telling you, you can't trust these Oxus, man. Come in with their own motives. What? They fuck things up like they just did. You watch your goddamn mouth. All right, all right, all right. Ma'am, the Everybody adults are talking. Um, I'll show you a fucking adult. Okay, everybody, everybody, calm down. Take a breath. <laughs> What's done is done. Bottom line is she botched the operation. Look. Ooh. And I will Look. be reflecting oh, that Jim? in my report. And as he kind of like just continues to mouth off, um, Deandra kind of wanders over. Just while this conversation is happening, wanders over to the pistol that uh, was kicked away from Georgia. Mm. Eyes the weapon. Because... Levels it and shoots uh, Jim in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Spring. Samara and Eva a little bit. Arterial spray. Oh, I'm what? sorry about the... I'll pay for the dry cleaning. The... What? The fuck? If you don't... If both of you don't tell me what the fuck is going on right now. Your sister was here. We lost the VIP. Georgia? They killed three of my men. I'm demanding George. answers. We've lost containment. The operation's gonna be marked as a failure. But maybe. Trader establish of her status and make a great first impression for a new op. What the fuck are you talking about, D? Here's you just shot one of my men! Try to witness. A witness. Eva, oh, what? you have Might a choice. I ask? Actually, you both have a choice, but here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take the blame for losing the girl. Take the slap on the wrist with it. Too valuable for them to dispose of. And you and Eva are gonna take credit for salvaging the mission and capturing this traitor. Look. D, I know. I know things haven't been really going the way we want, but... Are you saying do things the right way? By the book? Look. The book is fucked, Eva. Has been for a long time. I know, I know, I just... I never thought... <laughs> We've been doing this together a long time, D. Hmm? You didn't... You didn't think to... Maybe let me know? You know how they compartmentalize this shit? I wasn't sure which way you fell. Honestly. You know, that little pet project 
golden golden girl. And you're sure? You're sure they you go down for this, you'll be all right? I've wormed out of bus. You know why I said yes to you all those years ago. And now, I finally... Th I finally might know where he is. But Weatherwood's been fucked for a long time. Too much power in one hands. The hands. But maybe this uh, little luck. Gabrielle will be able to do something about it. Got really gray too. A little too quickly for me. <laughs> I get it. Uh, tomorrow. You've been uh, quiet. I'm just, just wrapping my head around everything. I, I just, uh, D. I, sw I swear, I. It, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't freeze. I didn't. I didn't freeze. I just. You did exactly what you're supposed to do. to go alive. Sometimes clouds don't fall down like you think they're going to. Gotta adapt and gotta compromise. Some of us compromise more than others. I think he found a pretty decent uh, razor's edge to walk. But... What do I know? Are you sure you're gonna be okay? <clears throat> I mean, you could say it was me. I'll flay you. Some sick unfortunately, experiment. unfortunately, kid, she's right. You can't go down for this one. I'll be fine. I have a long track record of being a reliable agent. I have nearly 20 years here. And... I'll be alright. Be all right. She kind of, her eyes flip between both of you for a moment. And she kind of stops herself from saying something. Nods. If you die, I'm kicking your ass, Steve. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> For better or for worse, kid. We're in this together now. going to be a little bit of a rough ride for the next few months, but... How much does Weatherwood know? About? About this, about you. Both of you. probably know a lot more than we're letting on. Well. Razor's edge it is, then. 
Deandra heads back to the cars and calls it in. Within minutes, the scene is crawling with Weatherwood officials. They begin cleaning up and documenting as you, Eva, and Deandra are all separated into cars and driven to a forward operating base. Faceless bureaucrats and nameless agents question and brief you nearly seemingly endlessly commending your capture of the elusive and thought to be dead Georgia Schultz. By the time your briefing happens, she is revived once more, so you have a live capture on your hands. How she revived, let the little find out. Over the next several weeks, you were put through Weatherwood's rigorous tra uh, agent training course. You began working with various senior agents over the following months, getting your feet wet with infiltration, recon, and recovery. All the while, you never see or hear from Deandra again. After several months, a handful of successful operations in your belt. You were assigned to your first partner, Eva Sinclair. That's where we'll end this episode of Call of Cthulhu. Forward. I just want to put a scene out where I hand Samara a flask of the same alcohol Father Joe used to share with me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Oh, <geez. laughs>